go draft the algorithm and scale it over here. Hi, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, I'm Quang Quan Liu, um, and this is a list of my uh, affiliations, past and future. Um, I'm very excited to be here as a research fellow this semester. Hopefully, you get to talk to a lot of you about very interesting problems. Um, and today, I'll be talking about uh, practical graph algorithms, specifically focusing on uh, scalability and privacy. Um, and when a theorist hears the word practical, often you might think about heuristics or lower level engineering um, to make perhaps suboptimal algorithms perform well in practice. Um, while this is uh, very important for a lot of algorithm engineering, this is not the focus of my talk today. So today I'll be focusing on talking about provably efficient algorithms. So algorithms with good theoretical guarantees. But the focus here is on models that consider uh, these modern practical challenges that we see in practice. Um, and also models that consider these uh, new computing environments that we have. So what are our goals here? Um, our goals as uh, algorithm designers um, is to produce data structures or algorithms um, with the best theoretical guarantees in these models. Um, and we want to produce these um, solutions while keeping in mind implementability. So how, how easy it is to implement these algorithms in practice. So what are some of these modern challenges that we're considering? Uh, one of them is the, the sizes of these data sets. So I've included some of these uh, common data sets that often people use um, that represent graphs. And the scales of these data sets can range from hundreds of billions of edges to up to trillions of edges. So even just reading these graphs takes hundreds of gigabytes of memory and up to several terabytes of memory. And of course, uh, these graphs are rapidly uh, changing. Um, so you can have up to millions of changes even um, per second, depending on what types of graphs you're considering. And finally, um, with these increased computing resources, of course, you also have stronger adversaries. So what these adversaries can do is that they can violate the privacy of these users. Uh, and if you're talking about decentralized networks, you can have nodes within the network that arbitrarily violate your distributed protocol. So I kind of want to um, talk about the central themes of my research. So um, as you can tell from the uh, title, of my presentation, I care about going from theory to practice. So how do we design algorithms that can perform well also in practice? But I also wanna emphasize that it's also interesting to go the other way. So going from practice to theory. And the questions we wanna ask here is, can we obtain theoretically efficient algorithms and models inspired by practice? So the word RAM model was inspired by practice, register allocation inspired by practice. So a lot of these classical problems that we're considering are inspired by practice. And I claim that considering these modern challenges, we can also get algorithms and techniques that are interesting mathematically. And finally, we want to consider these problems that inspire these quote unquote universal solutions. And what I mean here are, is a very broad um, definition for types of solutions or classes of solutions that are good in many different models and work for um, many different adversarial situations and problems. And I'll give some examples of these classes of solutions a bit later on. Um, so now I'll go into the part of my presentation where I'll be talking about a lot of terms without giving precise formal definitions for them. If you're, if you're interested about any of these concepts, please come talk to me. Or if you're uh, interested in making any of your algorithms practical or want to consider some of these uh, problems I've listed here, also please come talk to me. So uh, to combat some of these challenges I mentioned before, if you want to deal with um, these increasing input sizes, uh, you want scalable algorithms. And scalable algorithms are algorithms that scale gracefully to increasing input sizes by utilizing your increasing 
number of processors and computing resources. So what I mean are models that take advantage of modern hardware. So modern hardware nowadays usually consists of multiple cores on a single machine. So your standard laptops these days contain at least eight cores. So these cores can process information in parallel and read and write from a single uh, main, me main memory. And the model that we generally consider here um, is a shared memory work depth model. And in addition to um, these multiple core machines, you can also have many of them. And you can generally even rent them from services like Google Cloud Platform or um, Amazon Web Services. And with these multiple machines, you can form a distributed network uh, in which these machines communicate with each other um, via some communication protocols. And one such model that models this distributed network is the MPC or the Massively Parallel Computation Model. And of course, um, dynamic algorithms handle dynamically changing graphs. Um, this is a large part of uh, this program that uh, we're, we're um, focusing on this semester. Um, and one thing I want to emphasize uh, in terms of dynamic algorithms is that you can also have this batch dynamic model. So batch dynamic model uh, batches together multiple of these dynamic updates into one batch. And the cool thing about the batch dynamic model is that you can combine it with a scalable model from the previous slide um, to make this scalable. And finally, um, for these stronger adversaries, you can have these adversarial models. Like differential privacy is the gold standard for protecting user privacy. Um, and you can also have various forms of Byzantine resilient models to handle Byzantine nodes in a decentralized network. So what are some of these characteristics that we want um, with the goals uh, that I just stated in mind? Um, the first characteristic for practical algorithms is that we want them to be simple. So I know simple is kind of a taboo word um, for, for some of us. Um, so it's OK for the analysis to be complicated. Uh, but if you really want to make um, these algorithms practical and implementable, the algorithms themselves should be simple. Um, and in addition, um, let me just mention another characteristic of algorithms that uh, we find to be scalable. Um, and these are algorithms with some sort of local structure. So that's very broad. What do I mean by local structure? Um, I mean algorithms, graph algorithms that proceed in some small number of rounds, where in each round, uh, each node uses information from some local neighborhood. So you can just consider the one hop local neighborhood, and that's just your adjacent neighbors. Or you can then consider maybe the two hop or three hop. And during each round, each node takes um, some small number of actions. So let me give you some examples of some algorithms um, that uh, several of you in the audience have actually looked at. Um, so this will be familiar to some of you. Um, for the rest, unfortunately, I don't have um, enough time to give the precise algorithms. If you're interested about any of these, please come talk to me. Um, so the first example is these auction-based algorithms for bipartite matching problems. So uh, you can consider these algorithms to operate between um, a set of bidders on one side of your graph and a set of items on the other side. And the way you perform this matching is that you proceed uh, to bid on items um, using uh, your bidders on one side uh, in rounds. So you have several rounds of bidding. And this process of bidding gives you some matching. Surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, um, this uh, set of algorithms is very practical. Uh, and it results in a number of results in a wide variety of, of uh, models. So here are some, some of uh, the results in these models. Uh, most of them are quite recent, actually. And another example um, of a, one of these uh, Structures is a level data structure. So level data structure uh, partitions vertices into a set of levels. And um, for some models, like the dynamic model, you can move the vertices across the levels using some predefined rules. Turns out this class of structures also has a wide variety of applications um, for a wide variety of problems. Um, so I think a lot, of, uh, a lot of the authors here are actually um, in the audience. Uh, and for the, um, 
for the solutions for these problems, you can also implement them in a variety of models. So those are just two examples. If you want more examples, um, also please feel free to talk to me afterwards. And one last thing I want to mention before I conclude is that sometimes um, considering these algorithms with local structure can actually give you um, some relations between models. So one example um, of an algorithm with local structure is uh, what we call the set of locally adjustable graph algorithms. And we can actually show that uh, these graph algorithms that fall under this locally adjustable set of graph algorithms can be turned into um, algorithms with strong privacy guarantees. So the specific privacy guarantees that we care about here um, is this local model of privacy. Um, where you don't have a central curator, and each node protects the privacy of its own adjacency list. So let me give you a, a very simple formulation um, of this class of locally adjustable graph algorithms. So this simple formulation, each node in the graph starts off with some initial state. And then each node sends some function of its initial state to its neighbor. So S0 is receiving some function of the initial states of its immediate neighbors. Now, S0 has some predicate, uh, and it counts the, the set of sent information from its neighbors that satisfy the predicate. So it counts the number of this uh, function of these states that satisfy some predicate, and then updates its state according to that number that satisfy their condition. And you can do this process in multiple rounds. So you update the state, send the function of the state, and then count the number of uh, results that satisfy your condition, and then update your state, and so on. So you can, produce, uh, you can uh, repeat this procedure via several rounds. And surprisingly, maybe not surprisingly, um, there's quite a few problems that have algorithms that fall under this paradigm. And so we can turn all of these algorithms into private algorithms. So that, that concludes my presentation. Um, happy to talk to any of you about these problems or anything else. Any questions? Back in the 80s, we had this thing called the PRAM, which was a parallel oh, yes. model. Yes. With uh, random access memory, and, and it was deprecated because it really didn't pan out in practice. Uh, it, it sounds like you're telling me that uh, something like the PRAM is back, but maybe with a smaller degree of parallelism than we had anticipated in the past. I mean, is there a, is there a fundamental difference other than that? Yeah. So the PRAM model, um, correct me if I'm wrong. PRAM model generally assumes some p number of processors um, in the model, and then you're Complexities in terms of in terms of the number of processors. So here, um, for the work depth model, we actually get rid of this parameter. So the work work is just total number of computational steps. Depth is just your sequential uh, longest chain of sequential dependencies. So there's um, no p in the the bounds. And generally, we find that the work depth model is a simpler formulation. It's easier to come up with uh, theoretical guarantees in this bound. And getting rid of the processor doesn't the processor parameter doesn't really um, affect the practical performance as much. So the distributed... Thank you. Thank you. I, the distributed model with uh, differential privacy, are you assuming that the nodes are going to act in good faith? Or, uh, yes. Yes. or it's not a strong assumption? Uh, that could potentially be a strong assumption. So we are, so the question is uh, whether the nodes are acting in good faith when you're doing the local model of differential privacy. Yes, we are assuming that the, the nodes are uh, acting according to the protocol. Um, so actually I've gotten this problem a, a few times before. It is possible that the nodes want to somehow perturb their answers much, to a much greater extent than just adding some small amount of noise for whatever reason, maybe they want to mess up the statistics in the, in, the, uh, in the aggregate data. So that's 
definitely something to consider. Um, as far as I know, we have not considered this um, in the context of graphs, but I think we could, this is definitely something to consider for future work. Um, and just um, as a side note, as in these Byzantine resilient algorithms, we often think that most users perform in good faith. So perhaps not much of the statistic will be messed up with it by these few users who don't. Okay, so 